we do have to address what's going on right now with the latest whistleblower. A, a second whistleblower, now this one reporting that they've heard firsthand information, <laughs> has come out. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I mean, folks, you know, we've already got the transcript. We don't need anybody else to give us their take on the call, what they think they remember hearing, uh, what they heard from a friend that that friend thinks they remember hearing. We don't need all that. We've got the transcript. I mean, this stuff is just – Pat, George, you had some comments before the show that I just thought were hilarious. I mean, and, and basically it comes down to the first whistleblower wasn't good enough. Exactly. And so now they're bringing in a second whistleblower. Right. And that they, was – that's firsthand this time. That's right. Now, oh, now we have somebody who's firsthand. No, we have the transcript. <laughs> And by the way, you know, anybody who says, well, because I think this is where they'll go with it. They'll say, well, the transcript was doctored, right? The transcript was doctored. I mean, these are the same people who are jumping all over. If you watch the Sunday shows yesterday, you could see Chuck Todd talking all over a U.S. senator, not even giving him a chance to talk at some points, which I think was pretty much of an embarrassment. But that's what Chuck Todd is. You know, but they're all talking about, do you don't trust the FBI and CIA? You don't trust them? Well, if you think the transcript was doctored, then you don't trust those folks either, right? So they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. But That's this a good is point. Yeah, this is exactly what we predicted was going to happen because John Brennan gave a call for this. I don't know, it's been about two weeks ago, and he says, All you whistleblowers come forward. Now's the time, whistleblowers, everybody come forward. They're trying to do death by a thousand cuts by whistleblower. Mm-hmm. And and frankly, they're trying to do whistleblower gossip. Because remember, they just changed the form. I mean, I don't know how long this form has been around, but I'm sure it's been a long time. And then in August, August 12th, right before this, the first whistleblower came out, they changed the form to allow the whistleblower to report secondhand information. And of course, now it's all coming out, and it will continue to come out, that Adam Schiff and his team over there helped write this whistleblower complaint, that they worked actively with the whistleblower. We covered some of that last week. But you just continue to watch this stuff come out. And Adam Schiff is on record saying that he didn't have contact with the whistleblower in advance. So he's clearly not been truthful about things. Now, why in the world wouldn't he be truthful? I thought he just. I thought if you listen to him and Nancy Pelosi and all the other self-serving Democrats – they really hate this. They're very prayerful about this. They're saddened by this situation, but they just can't help but to follow the truth where it leads them, right? That's what they've been saying over and over and over again. That's their talking point. But now here we got a guy who repeatedly hasn't been truthful, and not just in this situation. If you go back to the Russia situation, remember, he said he had seen evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. He said he had seen it. Well, where was that in the Mueller report? Because it wasn't anywhere in the Mueller report. Does Adam Schiff have some special knowledge beyond what the two-year-long $30 million Mueller investigation did? No. I mean, just use your common sense, folks. Of course he doesn't. Of course he doesn't. He's just making this up as he goes along, and he's lying to support his point. Do you think that we could drag this out maybe 13 months just so that people don't hear it anymore because they just keep talking about it? It becomes, you know... In the background, they don't hear it because as soon as this is ended, there'll be something brand new. Exactly. Well, I think they will try to drag it out. I think they will continue to, you know, try to take this president down the same way they've been doing for three years. They might as well finish out his first term and probably when he gets reelected, because that's what's going to happen here. And I mean, things could change, believe me. But if the election were held today... I think he gets reelected in a landslide because people are a little bit fed up with the way the media is playing this game. I mean, the media and the Democrat politicians think the American people are stupid enough to believe this stuff. I mean, aren't you a little bit offended and insulted by that, folks? I mean, I know I am. I can't believe they think we can't remember what happened just a year or two ago. I think it's important, too, when you say the media aren't giving not giving the full picture. You talk about that attorney, uh, Mark Zaid, and he is the same one who created or co-founded Whistleblower Aid. He did that at the beginning of Trump's presidency. It blasted out advertisements around D.C. looking for whistleblowers. Yeah, yeah. So you should lead your story. By the way, you know, that should be his little byline with every story that you talk about this. And I feel like he I feel like that organization is also funded by George Soros, his Open Society Project and others. I'm pretty sure that's the case. I don't have 
that piece of data right with me, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So this has been a setup from the get-go. Thank you for listening to The Morgan Streetman Show. We hope you enjoyed what you heard, and if you did, please click like and subscribe to help us out. And remember that we recommend that you exercise your brain at least once a week.